For centuries, humans have pondered the possibility of life beyond our own planet. With the advent of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most advanced telescope ever built, we finally have the means to seek answers. As we turn our gaze towards the closest star system, Proxima Centauri, located just four light years away, scientists have made a startling discovery. Among the planets orbiting this distant star, Proxima B exhibits peculiar anomalies, artificial lights that defy explanation. These enigmatic illuminations have confounded experts in the scientific community, sparking speculation about the potential presence of intelligent life. Join us as we delve into the groundbreaking revelations brought forth by James Webb's observation of city lights that challenge our understanding of the cosmos. The only confirmed life exists here on Earth, but the question of extraterrestrial life has intrigued humanity for millennia. In pursuit of answers, American astronomers Jill and Thomas Pearson initiated the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI project in 1984. This nonprofit endeavor aims to detect spaceborne radio signals, leveraging the unique capabilities of the Allen Telescope Array nestled in the Californian Cascade Mountains. Despite three decades of diligent observation, no definitive evidence of extraterrestrial communication has emerged. The James Webb Space Telescope, successful in its launch, has further aided in the quest to examine a range of distances and undiscovered planets orbiting far-off stars. The largest telescope in the world, floating roughly a million miles from Earth and outfitted with incredibly sensitive detectors, will be used. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside those in our solar system. But since then, more than 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered orbiting other stars. According to NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest signs of life beyond our solar system may be found in extraterrestrial plant life. The Galileo spacecraft turned its equipment back toward Earth when it was en route to Jupiter and found a definite indication of the presence of plant life. The instrument detected the vegetation red edge, a mix of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For instance, a planet like Earth that is covered in a jungle should have a strong and easy-to-detect red edge. The JWST will measure the red edge of far-off Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars, as they could be important signs of life. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST may be able to detect it as it enters its atmosphere. The missing wavelengths of light would then be discovered via spectroscopy. Atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths, creating a characteristic fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This method may be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. It is likely that life could exist on Earth-sized planets with atmospheres similar to our own, with the predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By looking for elements that aren't usually present, one may be able to detect technological life. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, generated for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would probably be noticeable to alien monitors of Earth's atmosphere from a distance. If the JWST found CFCs in planet airy atmospheres, that would be a clear indication of civilization. Actually, life on an exoplanet might not even remotely resemble life on Earth. Sometimes, even earthly life, like extremophile species, can seem alien. This is a group of organisms, primarily bacteria, that can endure environments where other living things would perish. Some can withstand heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, some can withstand colds as low as minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and some can survive in strong acids with pH levels below 3, while others can be found on Earth in places where we would not expect to find any life at all. Planets like Earth are more likely to support life than planets with severe temperatures or acidic conditions. Could be a good idea to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. The classification for our Sun is a yellow G-type star. These stars are less common and typically have shorter lives in our universe. The likelihood of studying planets orbiting around red dwarf stars which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the sun, is higher. There is more time for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms because these stars have longer lifespans. Significantly, around 40 light years away from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of the JWST's first mission. 
It revolves around a calm red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of the rocky planets in the so-called habitable zone might have liquid water on their surfaces. Despite having a much smaller and colder mass than our Sun, radiates light that is similar to that of Earth due to the close orbit of its planets. The best chance for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light-years from the Sun and our nearest star. Proxima is about 600 times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order for it to support life based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 times the mass in this habitable region in a Goldilocks-like habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. Proxima b circles Proxima Centauri. It's possible that Proxima b is an airless, lifeless planet given that it orbits its red dwarf star Proxima Centauri at a distance of only 4.6 million miles. The planet Proxima b is in a close orbit that exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely destroy its atmosphere. It also provides enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water that are similar to those on Earth. Because of its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star, as the moon does in reference to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about 18% the mass of the Sun and burns far less brightly than one might anticipate for a planet so near to its star, just 5% of the Earth-Sun distance, which may be anticipated to be a red-hot cinder. Liquid water could easily exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to heat it, since the total energy reaching it from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. However, the planet is not especially friendly to life. It is most likely tidally locked, which means that it always faces the same direction toward the star and produces permanent day and night sides with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high-energy radiation as Earth does because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. Proxima b is also bombarded with high-energy particles during star flare-ups. Unless it has a shielding magnetic field similar to Earth's, however, there are certain realistic conditions that could make it a pleasant world. Sadly, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets may be susceptible to a rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. A planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape because we don't know anything about Proxima's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength we can't even guess whether or not the planet has an atmosphere. But since an atmosphere presupposes the existence of oceans and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life, we are desperate to know if Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization. It might have solar panels covering the day side to generate electricity to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine if it transits its star's face as seen from Earth. These transits would let scientists determine the planet's size and mass, which would then enable them to determine its density. Knowing that would validate the planet's rocky makeup and provide information on the materials used to create those rocks. During a transit, starlight might disclose the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere, but the likelihood that the orbit will be in the right alignment for scientists to see a transit is merely 1.5%. The star's propensity to flare also complicates matters. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is tricky, as its heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and radiate it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope was created specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared heat signature is the key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong affinity for water. The JWST will be able to observe city lights on Proxima b's night side, even if they were as faint as what our civilization currently employs on the night side of Earth we could detect artificial illumination as long as it was constrained to a frequency band that is 1,000 times narrower than the starlight. Proxima's day side is heavily coated with solar panels because of its unique spectral edge's ability to reflect starlight. As Proxima b revolves around its star, day and night are identical, with cool evening lows following daytime highs. The difference in temperature between day and night, however, 
depends on whether or not the planet is entirely composed of bare rock, because an atmosphere and ocean both conduct heat. In other words, if there isn't an atmosphere, Proxima B's day side and night side temperatures will differ more. In fact, since the day side will radiate all of the energy it receives from its star back into space as infrared radiation, and the night side will be dark, the planet would only be visible when observed with a telescope sensitive to infrared light. Although Proxima Centauri and Proxima B are still too far away for us to send explorers or even robots to them, a new initiative called Breakthrough Starshot aims to achieve this. This program is developing a method for sending micros to Proxima Centauri at a speed of 15% the speed of light. To reach Proxima Centauri, this would take 20 to 30 years and another 4 years to send the data back to Earth. Even though we won't be able to find out if Proxima B is an Earth-like paradise soon, with James Webb's launch, we will be able to answer the question of whether the closest potentially habitable exoplanet has life and even a technological civilization.